So good afternoon, everybody. And my name is Yukari Totsuka, and I'm from the National Cancer Center Research Institute, uh, Tokyo, Japan. And uh, uh, it's, a, it's an honor to speak here today, and I'd like to thank to, uh, the organizer to have this opportunity. So and today's my title is How Adaptomics Can Inform the Cancer Etiology. Okay, so everybody know about that there. So, but uh, uh, it is well known that the environmental factors are deeply involved to the human cancer development. And uh, uh, the mutagens and the many chemical compounds existing in our environment are once are uh, absorbed in our body. That is, chemical compound bound to the DNA nuclear bases to form DNA adducts. And uh, most of the, these DNA adducts can repair and back to the normal bases. However, the not repaired and the remain the uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear basics. So the, this DNA adducts uh, leads uh, into induce the mutations in the genome. So that's why the DNA adducts are con uh, considered to be a promethogenic substances. And also uh, DNA adducts have been used as a biomarker for the risk analysis. And uh, also this uh, kind of the, uh, information is a useful information for the exploration of cancer etiology. So this is a DNA adactomics and adactome analysis concept. And the DNA adactome analysis is a comprehensive analysis for the DNA adduct. And here showing the method of the DNA adactome analysis. And first, the DNA, the DNA was extracted from the tissues and then the enzymatically digested into the mononucleus, no, mononucleus side, and then the subjected to the LC MS MS uh, apparatus. And uh, the obtained outcomes uh, can be uh, separated by the retention time and the hemopathy values. And in order to uh, screen the specific DNA adducts and uh, by using the bioinformatics analysis. And if uh, luckily we found the specific DNA adducts, the DNA adduct identification was done by the uh, comparison with the hemopathy values of the authentic DNA adducts obtained from the in-house database. So I'd like to uh, show you uh, one typical uh, example today. And uh, so uh, we are analyzing the esophageal cancer uh, etiology in China uh, by using the disadactomics approach. And uh, as you know, the uh, China has a high incidence and a mortality rate uh, for the esophageal cancer in the world, and also the several high-risk areas exist in China for the esophageal cancer. So Tsushim, that located at here, uh, is one of the high-risk areas for the esophageal cancer in China, and uh, this figure shows the incidence of the esophageal cancer of this region. And uh, as you know here, uh, as you see here, the quite high uh, incidence of the esophageal cancer was observed in a man and a, a man and a male. And uh, so, uh, in general, the esophageal cancer is uh, deeply related to the uh, drinking alcohol and the sm smoking habit. But uh, in this region, the deeds habit that does not uh, cannot explain the fully. Uh, so the, that's why the. Uh, to address the etiology of esophageal cancer in this area, we carried out a, a DNA adactome analysis using the surgical specimens collect, collected from esophageal cancer patients living in high and low risk areas. And this is the result of the adactome analysis. And uh, you can see here, these are maps of the DNA adducts, and a huge amount of the DNA adducts can be seen in both high-risk and low-risk areas. And in order to uh, which uh, DNA adducts is uh, highly associated to the high-risk and low-risk area, that we use a PCA analysis. And as you can see here, that this is a 2D PCA score plot, and you can see here the uh, clear separation between the low-risk and high-risk areas. And also, we can observe the uh, associated loading plots, uh, loading plots and uh, several DNA adducts related with high-risk area can be observed uh, around here. And uh, this, is a adactom, uh, this is a heat map of the adactomics data. And uh, also, you can see here the 
clear separation between the high risk and the low risk areas, and these uh, each of the DNA adducts. And uh, among these DNA adducts, the first we focus on that uh, this DNA adduct, namely A10, the with the MOPG values are uh, each 352.18. And the next step, we search the similar MOPG values using the in-house database. And luckily, we found that the very similar uh, MOPG values in uh, our uh, database. And uh, this DNA adduct is uh, named THPDG. And the chemical structure is shown here. And uh, this THPDG was uh, formed from a, a, a kind of the nitrosamine compounds and nitrosopiperazine, NPIP. And very interestingly, and NPIP, it has already reported that it uh, induces esophag esophagus and uh, liver cancers in lots. And also, this compound exists in our environment, such as uh, um, the cigarette smoke or the uh, food, and sometimes uh, contaminated in the well water. So and uh, humans uh, could be uh, continuously exposed to this compound in their daily life. So next step, uh, we confirm the DNA adduct uh, structure correlated with the high-risk area. Because and in the previous slide, we just uh, predict the DNA adduct uh, structure using the MOPG values. So um, the confirmation is needed. So in the first step, uh, we uh, chemically synthesize the THPDG. And, uh, and then the analyzed by the LC MSMS for the uh, accuracy uh, mass spectrometry and analysis. And uh, this data shows the fragmentation patterns of the uh, DNA adducts. Uh, the upper panel shows the authentic uh, DNA adducts, and the lower panel is, uh, was uh, found in uh, esophageal surgical specimen. So as you can see here, the both of the uh, uh, very similar uh, fragmentation patterns was observed. And uh, moreover, the, uh, the MOPG values is almost identical between the authentic and the surgical specimen. And also, uh, we analyzed the um, exposure levels uh, by using the blood samples collected from the high risk and the low risk areas. And uh, here is a uh, result, and uh, as you can see here, the, this DNA adduct, THPDG, uh, was uh, observed in both areas, but uh, the exposure level seems to be high in the high-risk area. And next, this slide shows the uh, mutagenicity and the carcinogenicity of the NPIP. And the uh, upper panel shows the in vivo mutagenicity of the NPIP by using the GPT delta transgenic lot. And uh, this compound uh, induced a uh, uh, mutation frequency uh, uh, in the liver and uh, with the dose dependently. And also the, here showing the mutational pattern of the liver. Tum uh, liver, liver. And uh, uh, you can see here the GC to AT and AT to GC and AT to CG are the mutations were uh, clearly uh, increased compared to the control uh, animals. And also, uh, lower panel show the uh, carcinogenicity of the NPIP. And NPIP are uh, induced uh, papilloma and the squamous cell carcinoma uh, of the rat, and at this uh, uh, incidence. So, and uh, we also uh, analyze the mutational signatures of esophageal cancers in, uh, collected from the high risk and the low risk areas in China. And we uh, finally, uh, extracted uh, four kind of the mutational signatures from signature A to signature D. And uh, uh, all of these signatures, uh, it's very uh, similar to those of the uh, sign uh, these signatures uh, have already uh, known to the uh, cosmic database. And uh, signature C is uh, very close to the, uh, very similar to the signature 17. And uh, this is a, a contribution of the, uh, the each signatures uh, in the individual samples. And uh, uh, unfortunately, we cannot see the clear separation between the high risk and the low risk areas. <coughs> so next, then, uh, we analyze the correlation between the uh, levels of the THP DG adduct and the uh, four types of the mutational signatures. And uh, you can see here the weak uh, 
uh, correlation between the THPDG level and the signature C uh, can be observed like this. So this is a conclusion. And uh, by using the adductome analysis, so it is suggested that the NPIP exposure is partly involved in the development of esophageal cancer in uh, Tsushian resident. And uh, uh, it is needed to, an um, epidemiological study will be uh, needed to clarify the relationship between NPIP exposure and esophageal cancer risk. And I think that I can show you that uh, the DNA electronics is uh, very useful for the uh, screening for the specific DNA adducts. So, and uh, uh, this figure shows the mutational signatures found in the human cancer. And uh, as uh, many uh, investigators uh, uh, describe that, uh, that these um, mutational signature uh, would be reflected to the uh, etiology and uh, exposure, but uh, uh, the mutational signatures have already linked to the uh, etiology, it's uh, limited, and most of these signatures uh, is not known yet. So identification of the DNA adduct that are directly res responsible for mutational signature is an ideal way to elucidate environmental cause of cancer. So this is my uh, last slide. And uh, I would like to propose that a new approach for the exploration of cancer etiology. And I think that uh, genome analysis and adductome analysis is fused together. And uh, the, the identification of the DNA adducts uh, will be uh, done by the adductome analysis. And then the verification for the candidate etiology using genomic analysis. So by using this uh, new approach, uh, it is expected that uh, uh, not known uh, that human cancer etiology uh, could be uh, explored in the near the future. So this is an acknowledgement. And uh, that's all. Thank you for your kind attention.